Okay, we'll continue where we left off with the chessboard. And SolidWorks has the most recent files uh, available right under File. I don't have to go all the way through the file, open and choose the location. So here we are, the last thing we did, if you recall, is we actually raised the faces of all of these squares up rather than extruding, extrude cutting these lines. There was, I haven't figured out exactly what that was, but sometimes it does, it detects some zero uh, distance geometry sometimes when you're extruding along faces, but we found a quick fix and we're just going to move on. So the next thing I'm going to do is instead of zooming around here and disorienting all of us, just go to the top view and what I'm going to need for this mobile chessboard and again we're looking at uh, four inches by four inches on this four units by four units and I did that just by right clicking and then that right there edit sketch takes me back into the sketch let's just see what will happen if I go eight by eight OK, click Exit Sketch. I would imagine that this bottom left hand corner is going to show our actual chessboard squares and the rest will just be a blank face. OK. Actually, I distorted something completely. Well, if I want to look into that further, first of all, hopefully we can just switch this back to 4x4. Four Let's do that first, save all of our progress. I want to look back into that further and see how my lines that cut the board into 64 squares are really defined. And you recall I offset them a half inch at a time. There's other ways to do that so that instead of a half inch, they're not defined by the half inch, they're defined by, oh, this line right here is one-eighth the distance in between here and here. And that way, no matter what my board width is or my board height, the size of the squares will change proportionally with it. But that's for another demonstration, and that's something that you can uh, look at on your own. That would be pretty nice, because if I wanted to make any size of board, I could quickly do that. That's not our intention for this board, so we'll just keep moving. What I want to do is put uh, peg peg holes in each one of these faces. So I'll pick a face, and I can go up to Sketch and click Sketch. I can right-click and click Sketch, either or. Okay, so now I am sketching on this face. On Actually, more, more specifically, I'm sketching on a plane that is defined by this face. So we're going to enter some construction lines here. I want the, the hole to be perfectly centered on this face. So when I do that, when I did that, I selected line. And by default, SolidWorks has, okay, see I'm snapping right to the midpoint, and that midpoint turns, turns orange. And I have a little yellow icon that shows up. Right now it's just saying coincident to that line. That's what that yellow box means right to the bottom right of my pencil and line. And when I, sh when I hover right over that, you see that little yellow box that's the icon in the middle of it changes to where instead of just being coincident, that little icon means midpoint. Okay, so I'm at the midpoint of that line. I'll do the same thing down here. Now also this is a vertical line and it also at is at the midpoint. Right here, it's just coincidence. It's neither vertical nor at the midpoint. Now, vertical and midpoint. Okay, and I'll hit enter twice to get out of that. But you notice this one is a dashed line. That's a construction line. This one's solid because when I was drawing it, I did not indicate for construction. I'll go back and do that. Now we have both of them as construction lines. I will make a circle. And... I always, instead of, you, you can enter the radius right here, but I, I don't bother with that. I always go back and I dimension it. 
So we're going to make this diameter of a quarter inch. And we'll click OK. And now I want to pattern that circle eight times in the X direction and eight times in the Y direction. So I will familiar with this linear sketch pattern. Entities to pattern is the circle. Distance, everything's set up on half an inch. And the number will be 8. Okay, and in the Y axis, the number will be 8. Distance will be half an inch. Now, every single one of these will be in the center of the square that they are on. Cool. And I will hit green check mark. Now, this should be, I'm going to go ahead and exit this sketch. Now, while that, then I'm going to, I just clicked off to deselect the sketch. So the geometry exists on a plane on top of this board in the form of sketch 3 here. So what I'm going to do is select that sketch. I'm going to go to features. And then we are going to do the extruded cut. And we are going to go down half the distance of the board. This is a half inch board from top to bottom, so I'll go down 0.25. And notice it's selected, I have a preview here of every single circle. Because each one of those circles is a closed loop. When I selected the extruded cut, I had the entire sketch selected, so it automatically selects all the contours, which in this case is just defined by the entire sketch. And then I will hit green check mark boom there is the pegs for our pieces to sit in now I think I will go back and because I'm pretty much okay with what we have here I'm gonna go and start filleting all of the sharp edges let's go with tangent propagation so if I select one edge, it should select the entire edge there. I'm going to reduce this from 100 thousandths to 50 thousandths. That's nice and soft. Okay. And I'm going to continue to select edges. So I go all the way around the board. I didn't like that for some reason. I lost almost everything. All right, let's just right click clear selections. Okay, I've got it there. Now, why do I lose it there? It's asking me left loop, right loop, connected. All of those, 310 edges. edges. Uh, everything there, including the holes, which is kind of nice, but this fillet radius will definitely be too large for that. This is basically saying connected 334 edges. Or, I'm going to keep going over. It's filling in. My preview is all in purple. All 894 edges. That looks like what I want. Let's see what this final was. Is all convex edges. Uh... Let's just do all edges. Now, you'll notice I'll select this. And it's processing a lot of geometry. Okay. So, but the, I'm not getting a preview of the fillet itself. And I already know this, that that fillet radius is way too big for all of these small intersections of uh, faces or planes. So, and I'll explain that further. So right now, the distance, I'm saying I want to make a fillet on that edge and every other edge. The radius of that fillet cannot be 50 thousandths. It's got to be much smaller. In fact, if I click check mark right now, I'll get an error. After much thought. And it failed to create fillet. Please check the input geometry and radius values or try using the face fillet option. In this case, we know through experience 
and geometry and math that we want to check the radius value. So I'll hit close. Thankfully I still have everything selected. It didn't lose that. So what we're going to do is just bump that way down to five thousandths. Now, and I hit enter. Now, I, what I thought would happen is if, is if this is going to work, all of the little preview would turn into yellow. But I'm just going to go ahead and hit green check mark and see what happens. Oh, there we go. I think... Oh, I didn't, hold on. Hey, it worked. Look at that. That's cool. So now all my sharp corners are slightly rounded, which is nice. And I bet you I could take it, be a little more aggressive with that fillet value. Maybe even bump it up to ten thousandths. I don't know. Right now it's soft. There's no hard edges. I'm almost, I am okay with that for the time being and ready to just move forward and keep keep working maybe now to um, give this board some opposite colors. We could work with appearances. So let's edit the appearance. And my selected ge geometry, I had one of those little fillet sections actually selected, and that's what's in the selected geometry. So I'll clear that. And it's going to say, oh, do I want to select the part? Well, no, I don't want the whole part one color. Let's select faces. Here we go. I'm going to select that face, and that face, and that face, and that face. And this, and this, and you get it, so on and so forth, until I fill out the chessboard. There we go, and the faces I just selected, there we go, look at that, we'll go with black, and this is just for rendering purposes, and then I could select the opposite faces, make them white. I think I'm forgetting one in here somewhere. Uh, yeah, it's not highlighting which ones to remind me, which ones I had have already selected, so we'll just go with it. These ones will be white. Oh, that's because I was on part. Duh. All right, select. There we go. Thought it was time to restart the computer. So now we're selecting faces. And I'm just left mouse clicking. I'm not holding down shift or control or anything like that. It's just naturally allowing me to select multiple faces, which is convenient. And... Oh. Since I already had white selected, yeah, good, all right. There we go, they're white, and I hit OK. All right. Now I wonder if I edit the, the appearance now for the part. Ah, good, it'll keep my, it'll keep the faces being black and white, and the part itself can be any color. Awesome. How about a nice gray. Cool. There we go. Our chessboard's starting to take on some life. Very, very cool. Alright. Whenever you're at a really nice point in your part, I'll tell you this right now, always save it. The undo function on SolidWorks is notoriously bad. Some things you think, oh, thank Thank you, I can undo that.
and other things you can pull your hair out and ask why, why, why. Why can I not undo that? Why would you do that to me? So now that I think about this, you know, this little crevice in here, let's see how tall this really is because it, it looks like a good place for dirt to collect and I don't know if we really want it. So again, I'll just go back to the measure tool and I'm going to select the distance between that face and that face. And I'm looking for that normal distance and it's 10 thousandths. Okay, it's not really a huge gap. When we actually get this thing 3D printed, it's not a lot of room there for anything to collect. And I can also increase the radius of the fillet to really reduce how much volume of dirt and debris can actually fit into that valley. So that's something we can always come back and change. For instance, I'll change it right now. Let's edit this fillet. And we'll just change the radius on it. And just know that certain things take time on SolidWorks, depending on what your system is. There's the full preview. So let's see if I can bump this up. 0.006. Oh, of course, it's going to think and think and think. That's fine. And I lose that preview. So let's go ahead and green check. Even though I got full preview selected, two things. Either A, it just doesn't want to give you the preview, or B, it can't because you're going to have an error. And you never really know. Oh, there we go. An error. So we were really at the max. Let's bump that down to five thousandths and be done with it. Green check. Okay. Well, let's stop for now. We got into appearances of faces and appearances of parts. Again, we linear patterned sketch entities, and then we did an extruded cut to a blind depth. Uh, we also filleted for the first time, and we're at a nice little stopping point. We could pick up here again, and but I think it's really time to design some pieces and get the pieces placed in this board and then we can actually look at making an assembly and decide so we can design pieces and board simultaneously so they function better with one another so that's when things get exciting so thank you very much and stay tuned